do a quick agenda of what we'll cover today. Uh, John Hammer's gonna go over the latest architect version of, and last architect version <laughs> of the entryway and the lobby floor plan. Uh, Karen Stanky is gonna touch on uh, the, the, beginning, uh, the beginnings of some of the green aspects uh, of the project. Uh, Pam Graham's got some really interesting stuff uh, on the color door rooms and what's happening with those, an overview and, and the impact on RE and the church in general. I'll do a quick financial, a couple of financial items uh, related to the capital campaign, and then we'll save the Q&A on everything to the very end of the uh, presentation, um, and we can go back to the slides that are in question. And with that, I'm going to introduce John Hammer uh, to uh, tell us about the entry and lobby, and I have my 995 laser pointer for you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. As uh, Dick outlined, I'll be talking about the revised front entrance and lobby design. The front entrance was revised rather dramatically because, as you may recall, when we received bids for the original design, we weren't just surprised, we were shocked by how high costs had risen this past couple of years since the recent recession. So the whole front entrance and lobby ceiling structure, roof structure, was greatly simplified to reduce costs uh, out of necessity. In the rendering, uh, you will see somewhat dimly, but hopefully, uh, you'll see that we now have a uh, simple but strongly stated elegant statement of our front doors that I believe answers our original charge to our architect, that of providing us with a clearly identifiable front entrance that no one will mistake. Replacing our original front entrance that has always left many visitors uncertain where to enter the church. The new entrance also has a crisp new 21st century feel that strikes all the right notes for me. I actually think it expresses some of our Unitarian values of honesty and clarity, as well as a welcoming, sheltered arrival experience for us and our visitors. It also honors and respects the simplicity of the original 1958 Yamasaki design. You can see that the new entrance is the same height as the adjacent social hall roof to the right. Um, Well, I can see it here, but I can't. Oh, you have to hold it on. So, yeah, this is the uh, where the uh, kitchen um, kitchen addition storage room projects out. This is the social hall corner, and our present entrance is set back beyond that. The new entrance projects out slightly from the social hall wall and from the adjacent uh, conference room and office. RE office uh, uh, building. So that allows much taller glass wall at the doors, right here, which brings natural light to the south part of the new lobby. And because that glass wall is set well back under an overhang, this being the overhang, it will shade the entrance during the summer and allow the sun to do its best, its best to provide light during the winter. Uh, moving to the overall BUC floor plan. Um, you can see the courtroom configuration is new, and the front doors into the lobby have been pulled back so that we're not building as large an addition out front here as we had been showing in the original design. So our, this is the courtroom. Uh, after you enter through these pairs of double doors, and uh, 
the earlier design uh, had the front doors and, and the whole front entrance pulled out considerably farther. So we've cut back on our footprint. Um, it's uh, important to note that once we're indoors, our architect's original design for the lobby and gallery has not been changed. We still have the gently sloping floor, not a ramp, along with the other features included in the original design. So this very gently sloping floor that takes us to a landing here and then gently down all the way to our social hall doors is all retained. These front doors, uh, because this ramp is this, pardon me, this gently sloping floor, <laughs> heresy, is uh, so long because of its gentility uh, that it requires uh, that these doors be at least this far out to provide a lobby space before the, the ramp starts. This part of the floor here is, is flat like the rest of the lobby. It's really the rest of the lobby. And then there's a, a quick stair of a few risers down to where the ramp has gotten us by this point. And then we uh, continued down to meet the uh, present floor level there. And going to the larger scale plan of the front entrance only. So that's where she went. Was that it? That was it? Yeah, 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 that's where we were. Sorry, my script is not matching what's going on here. <laughs> uh, you can again see the coat room configuration is new, the front door is the lobby. I've read this, haven't I? Uh, also, though these drawings don't show it, the clerestory windows and stepped roof design have been eliminated, uh, again, to, to reduce costs. So it'll be a single roof with no clerestory uh, window. As in the first design, this new high lobby will provide a lot of natural light from both the south and the north, which follows Yamasaki's original intent of connecting us to the out of doors wherever we are in our campus. So I think that's it in a nutshell. And now, Karen Stinky. Good morning. I guess it's still a couple minutes before noon here. Um, I want to talk uh, as representative of the Green Sanctuary on this on the Campus Development Committee about some of the green initiatives that we're starting to get worked in and that now we have a bit more detail on. The first section is the energy efficiency or basically these next six items really decrease our carbon footprint. We're going to have smart or continuous insulation system on any new walls that we do end up putting up, which eliminates any thermal bridging or holes. To me, the biggest uh, plus of this is it'll give us on the new walls up in that area an R value of 21. Um, most home insulating systems in walls give you an R of about 14 to 18. So we're Definitely on the high end. I saw some at 20 with different, you know, techniques and double layers. So that's certainly a big plus. The commons connector, because we're going to be replacing the single pane glass with the insulated glass system and the method of attaching it to the mullions or the uprights will give us much more insulation in that area. While I'm talking about the connector, I do want to say that there's going to be heat now in the connector also, which we don't have currently. So that'll help even just with atmosphere and transferring between the two sections. In addition to the glass, any new glazing that we have, both on those front doors that um, John had talked about, we're going to, is going to be double glazed, and again, that mullion system that will give us the best insulation we can get for that light. Did you? 
move to the next. In the lobby, we're going to have a, for the lobby, we need to replace the uh, furnace system and there's going to be a high efficiency mechanical system. It can utilize 100% fresh air from the outside when the temperatures outside are about 70, so we won't have to use either and yet we'll be pulling in fresh air. You know, the, the negative on this one is we're still using fossil fuels, but we will use them at a much higher efficiency rate than if it was not a high efficiency furnace. So, you know, pluses and minuses on that one. Although BUC has already currently switched all our lights either to LED or CFLs, the um, that so, thank you. <laughs> I was going to say everybody knows what a CFL is, hopefully, here. Um, it's going to be great, and I'm delighted that we're actually going to be able to switch to the most current technology throughout the entire campus and give us all LEDs, which are the most uh, cost-effective as using the least amount of electricity. In this area, most of our electricity is still created by coal, so that decreasing any electricity we can is beneficial for us. So that is a step and, and we'll be doing the entire campus, not just the renovated areas. We're uh, in the current process. Uh, I'm sure Jim must be here. You know, he's just working on researching the, a programmable remote Wi-Fi system to control our thermostats. Our wish from Green Sanctuary is that we can include lights on that and also it would be wonderful for security to somehow get programmable locks on there too for the security of the building. Not sure that will be in this phase of what we're doing. The building materials, and this is, we're going to be using recycled material content in most of the finishes in the aluminum panels, the glazing, the carpet, the ceramic tile, and other floor treatments. Um, within the next couple of weeks or within this next month, I'll probably be receiving the environmental product declarations for review on that. End decisions have not been made yet on the decorator type touches for the different furnishings, uh, finishings on that. So we want to try to get things that are have the highest amount of recycled content. In addition to the highest recycled content, we want to be able to make sure that once something reaches its life expectancy, that we will be able to recycle it and not have to put it in a dump. So we're looking at, you know, what do we do when we need to dispose of it at some point in time also. And our architect is providing us all the information on that to help us make our choices. The materials, uh, which I was very pleased with, are going to be sourced within a 250-mile radius at the max of the metro Detroit area. Most of them are closer than that. So that's a certain plus for not utilizing excess uh, fuel in order to transport things here. All the paints and finishes are going to be low or no VOCs, volatile organic compounds. Um, this will help our air quality as well as asthma for kids, etc. Moving into the children, we're going to remediate. We've discovered there is asbestos in the floor tiles in the classrooms, so we've got a whole hazmat procedure that's going to happen in order to rectify that safely and dispose of it properly. The enhanced indoor air quality strategies are basically via that new furnace, which will be able to bring in... Okay, did she not switch it? <laughs> Every time I turn away, I'm not sure you can't hear me without if I'm not directly in front of the mic, um, is the furnace, um, which will bring in and mix outside air with it so that we will not have stale air that's just been recirculated. The indoor environmental quality is uh, we're going to have increased thermal comfort in the lobby and the commons, and that's because we're going to have better insulated glass, and it's going to be double paned. We there should not right now you get drafts in both those areas. I know at. Uh, SOS, when I've sat in that main front lobby, you feel air blowing <laughs> and everything is closed. And the water also comes in, so we will not have water coming into our interior spaces either. Um, and I've already mentioned that the connector will also be open and we'll have heat, we'll pull off. The furnace is going to be big enough to provide heat to the connector. 
By eliminating the two brick walls that are currently in the lobby will help integrate the daylight into the lobby from the north side. And as John has already said, we've got a much wider opening of glass on the south side, which will bring natural light into that area. Not only does it, it bring natural light into the area, especially on the south side, but he played up. There's a overhang that's enough to limit the sun exposure during the summer that heats up that area, which requires more air conditioning. We don't current. We don't have an overhang. We have bubbled light fixtures that, if you're standing in that lobby in the summer, you get hot there. <laughs> um, so that we won't have that expense to heat. Having glass on and the quality views, he's already mentioned both to the south and to the north. On the north side, you're going to see out the you're going to get the full effect of the windows better because from probably I don't know waist down or so, it's going to be below grade so that or lower. Whereas right now the glass goes to the floor and we've got furniture and stuff in front of it, so you'll you know the glass will start at a more towards your eye level. It'll be lower than that, but it will certainly you'll have a much better view out those windows. The last section is water management and efficiency because that certainly, although we're Great Lake states and we're surrounded by water, it's as some of it is um, water disposal as well as conservation. All our new plumbing fixtures, as we renovate, all the bathrooms will be renovated, other than the two uh, than the two bathrooms that are downstairs here in the sanctuary, and now I'll have. Um, their fixtures will be conserve will conserve water. The stormwater capacity will be increased and stormwater quality improved because we're going to increase the capacity of the pond and that the drainage around the newly built areas of the building are going to be sloped better to delay uh, flooding and just running down the hill towards the pond. In addition to that, we're going to have native plant species planted in that new area out front, and those will need need less water and less maintenance, but they also have deeper root systems which will help retain the water longer so that it's not just running off. Being green is a continuum. While BUC has stepped onto this continuum with all of these items, we've really just begun that whole process and there's lots more to be done. How much we mitigate BUC's impact on the environment is up to all of us, the congregation. Uh, to paraphrase or borrow from our guest speaker this morning, when all is said and done, will we embrace the seventh principle as much as we embrace the other principles? Thank you. Good afternoon. I have, I have no script, so I have to look at my slides. And I would like to talk to you about the BUC classroom updates. I've been a member of this committee for a really long time, and I've spent more hours than I can count um, in the meetings um, and working with the members of the church. I think that you've all, thank you for coming to this presentation. I know that you've heard presentations about us needing your money, about our budgets, about the budgets, not about firewalls and sloping floors and things like that, and, and you're, yet you're back, but maybe those things aren't too interesting. And I hope to spark that the improvements to the classrooms um, are meaningful and important, and I think will improve your engagement with the church and our ability to serve our members and renters. So I take you back to one of those earlier meetings um, when we talked about the, the project and remind you of the criteria we use to evaluate the necessary improvements to the church. If we do this fix, does it advance our principles? Thank you, Karen, for showing us how it does. Um, is it going to be a multi-purpose space? Because we can't do everything for everyone. We need to to be um, uh, to share the space well. And does it produce growth? Growth for our programs, uh, income, savings? Does this make sense in a budget? 
And I'd like to um, appeal that the, the improvements, these last uh, late uh, selections and finishes, finishes and designs really will come a long way to do that. So <clears throat> it's true that the footprint stays the same. Earlier designs had an inside ramp connecting the classrooms to the sanctuary and to the office area. And because of budget constraints, we'll all have to go outside. That doesn't mean that the classrooms are not accessible. They remain accessible. There is no doorway or stairway to get someone in a wheelchair to those classrooms. But they, like us, will have to go outside for a short period of time and then be on a covered walk and then enter the classrooms which um, by the architectural design are kind of separate and outside and, uh, and help you integrate with the outdoors. So there was some reason for the choices the architect made and we're not able to override them with a budget that can make the hallways inside. So um, just to orient you, hopefully you can see the colors and you know which way these pictures are facing. And we have the blue door, the red door, and the green door. And I'll talk about the interventions in those areas. So the refreshed classrooms will most definitely, although we're keeping the footprint the same, we're going to add function. We're going to add accessibility. We're going to add energy efficiency. And I think we're going to add some pizzazz. You're going to like them. First, uh, let me talk about um, accessibility. Although today there's no ramp, there's no step or doorway that prevents someone from entering the classroom, entering the bathrooms is a different story. The bathroom doors are set 27, inch, 27 inches wide, too wide with people with mobility issues to enter, I mean too narrow. So the, the bathrooms will be, uh, will have wider doors, 36 inch doors. And they will be um, outfit with completely new and efficient fixtures and attractive, durable, easy to maintain, easy to clean um, tiles. Hmm. I don't know if you can see these. If you can't, you should just go take a look at them to know that I, um, they're true. So the blue door today is two classrooms, one of which is kind of too small to be very useful, but it's often used as a meeting room. There's some, there's some uh, besides some of the finishes being outdated and worn, there's some systemic problems in there, in, in that classroom and in all the classrooms. And the blue door, um, I'd like to point out the major, uh, uh, AA is an important renter of that space and they use a lot of folding chairs. And those folding chairs don't really have a home, so they're everywhere. Here's a picture, oh, I forgot I had this, the folding chairs. And uh, this is the cleaning supplies and they just keep them in the, in the bathroom and it just doesn't seem like a bathroom you'd want to visit or have your children visit. And um, coffee is very important to the group and they've um, <clears throat> made some creative solutions on how to serve the coffee. It's in the hallway as you enter the blue door. And if you can see that, if you can't see this, just go take a look. It's a water fountain and it doesn't work. That's good because it's covered with a shower curtain and on top of that there's an electric timer and that's what turns on the coffee pot so that it can be hot and ready coffee before you arrive. So um, these are uh, problems that are uh, a problem with how this room is used that we need to correct this or it will just return to this state of entropy because this is what the users need. Places to store their cleaning equipment and places to serve coffee. How do we do that? Is The blue door renovation eliminates the interior wall and becomes one space, a large space, which a lot of groups wanted to see a larger space, not just the commons 